Hello, this is Yashreen. Today, I'm going to be solving Paper 4, Variant 3, October, November 2019, 0625 Physics. Starting with question number 1. Figure 1.1 is the top view of a tank in an equi aquarium. The tank is filled with salt water. The depth of the water in the tank is 2 meters. A. Calculate the volume of water in the tank. So, I have rectangle A and rectangle B. So, I'll calculate the volume of the tanks by first multiplying 1 with 3.2 into the height, which is 2. And then, I'll add the volume of the second rectangle, which is 1.1 into 1.6 into 2. And that gives the answer of volume as 9.9 .9 meters cubed. B. The density of the water in the tank is 1.1 into 10 to the power of 3 kilograms per meter cube. Calculate the mass of the water in the tank. So, substituting the formula of density gives the um, formula of mass as density into volume, which is equal to 1.1 into 10 to the power of 3 multiplied by 9.9. .9. And that leaves with answer of mass as 1.1 into 10 to the power of 4 kilograms. C. Calculate the pressure due to the water at a level of 0 0.8 meter above the base of the tank. So pressure is equal to density into gravity into height which is equal to 1.1 into 10 to the power of five, uh, 3 multiplied by 10 multiplied by 1.2. And the answer is equal to 1.3 into 10 to the power of 4 pascals. Question number 2. A. State in words the equation that defines the, mo the moment of a force. Force multiplied by perpendicular distance. Mentioning the point perpendicular over here is important since um, another formula is a force into distance is also of work done. Work done also has the same formula. So perpendicular over here is at the point which will score you another mark. Two, state what is meant by the uh, moment of a force. Three force is a vector quantity. Explain what is meant by the term vector. B figure 2.1 shows a tower crane used to lift a load on a construction site. Explain how the counterweight provides prevents the crane from toppling over. Alright, so the counterweight over here is acting as the anti-clockwise moment and that is the reason it does not topple uh, towards the right because of the weight of the load. Question number 3a, figure 3.1 shows a waterfall. 1. Describe the main energy transfer which is taking place as the water falls. Alright, so the water initially has gravitational potential energy which gets converted into kinetic along with heat and sound energy. Two, the speed of the water as it hits the bottom is 21 meters per second. Calculate the height of the waterfall. Alright, so the hint over here was given in the first part of the question 
where we were uh, where the question asks the conversion of energy so similarly the conversion of energy can be used over here as gravitational potential energy lost by the water should be equal to kinetic energy that is gained by the water so gravitational potential energy is equal to mass into gravity into height which is equal to kinetic energy half into uh, mass into velocity squared so i'm going to be cancelling mass on both the sides since that is not given height here is unknown so i'll be keeping it on the left hand side shifting gravity towards the left hand side gives the formula half into velocity which is 21 squared divided by gravity which is 10 and that is equal to 220.5 divided by 10 and the answer of height is 22 meters 3 state and explain any assumption you made in 2 all right so the assumption is no energy is lost to the surroundings B. The sun is the source of uh, energy for most energy resources and uh, used to produce electricity. State two energy resources that have another source for their energy. They can be tidal energy and nuclear energy. Question number four, solids have a fixed shape. Liquids adapt to the shape of the containers. Gases fill their container. Explain in terms of forces between molecules and arrangement of molecules, why solids, liquids, and gases have these properties. So solids, since this question has been assigned six marks, this means two marks will be uh, for eight states of matter. Solid molecules, they have a strong intermolecular forces. Along with that, uh, they have um, they are fixed in their positions, and they have a lattice arrangement. Their uh, molecules are uh, arranged in a lattice structure. Now, liquids uh, among their molecules, the forces forces between forces between molecules is not as strong as into the liquids forces between liquid molecules are not as strong as of solids and they're not enough to keep its molecules in a fixed pattern that's one feature second feature is uh, there is irregular arrangement of molecules now coming towards the gases We have very weak force of attraction between molecules, between their molecules. And their molecules, they are far apart. They are far apart. Question number five. An electric kettle contains water at temperature 19 degrees Celsius. The kettle has a power rating of Three kilowatts and it is switched on for three minutes a calculate the energy supplied to the kettle by the electric supply okay so energy is equal to power into time power given in the question is 3000 watts into time I'll convert 3.5 minutes into seconds and this gives the answer as 6.3 into 10 to the power of 3 joules of electrical energy. B. At 
0.5 minutes, the temperature of water reaches 100 degrees Celsius. The volume of the water in the kettle is 1700 centimeter cube and its den density is 1 gram per centimeter cube. The specific heat capacity of the water is 4200 joules per kg degree Celsius. Calculate the thermal energy gained by the water. Alright, I'll start by calculating the change in temperature, which is 100 minus 19, which was the initial temperature. This gives the answer as 81 degree Celsius. Alright. Now, I'll, uh, the formula of specific heat capacity is energy divided by mass into change in temperature. And shifting the values gives the uh, formula of energy as specific heat capacity into mass into change in temperature. So mass over here is um, not given. Instead, we are provided with the uh, volume and density. So density is equal to mass over volume, which means mass is equal to density into volume. And that is equal to 1 into 1700, which is 1700 grams. Now we need to convert it into kg to um, have all of the values over here in standard units. And that is equal to 1.7 kg energy is equal to specific heat capacity into mass into change in temperature which is equal to 5.8 into 10 to the power of 5 joules see calculate the efficiency of the kettle so efficiency is equal to energy input over energy output multiplied by 100 Energy input was the electrical energy, which um, calculated in the earlier parts is equal to 5.8 into 10 to the power of 5 divided by the energy output, which we calculated in the earlier part is 6.3 into 10 to the power of 5. And that gives the efficiency as 92%. Question number 6. Figure 6.1 represents wavefronts of a sound wave traveling in air from left to right a state the name given to one a region around a in the diagram right region re, uh, a over here is compression compression since particles are closer together region b is the rarefaction b on figure 6.1 draw a double edged arrow to show one wavelength so one wavelength is um, basically um, starting from one end to the other one complete wave in other words which also has a single compression and a single rarefaction area this is it Part C, the loudness of the sound increases at the same pitch. State and explain any change there would be in pattern of wave fronts shown in figure 6.1. Okay, so loudness is linked to amplitude and pitch is linked to frequency. So with increase in loudness, we expect amplitude to increase with no change in wavelength. So I'll write amplitude increases wavelength remains the same as far as um, as far as pattern of wavefronts is concerned um, distance between them so uh, wavefronts will now get closer at compressions and they get farther they get farther at rear factions party the wave passes into water state and explain any change in the pattern of wave fronts shown in figure 6.1 so sound travels faster in liquids than gas 
because molecules are closer in liquids hence it's easier uh, hence it's easier to transmit the energy when particles are closer together so this means that um, speed is greater in water than air so uh, wavelength also increases according to the formula speed is equals to uh, frequency into wavelength wavelength and speed they are dire directly proportional to each other uh, the distance between the two wave fronts increases Question number 7, part A. Figure 6.1 shows the position of a converging lens, its principal axis, and an object O. Each principal focus of the lens is labeled F. On figure 6.1, draw a ray diagram to locate the position of the image formed by the lens. Label the image I. So you'll notice that your object has been placed before the principal focus. The very first line you'll have to draw should be parallel to the principal focus and, and touching these dotted lines. The second line you'll be drawing is you will continue from the same line and your line should be uh, going straight right through the principal focus the first principal focus on the right side okay now your second line should be starting from here and going right through the center of the lens now you'll notice that uh, none of your lines will be intersecting with each other so let's take your lines to the left of your lens too to see if both the lines intersect with each other And now I see that this is the intersection point of both the lines and this intersection point is where your image will be forming. So your image will be right here. You label it as it is asked in the question with I. B. Describe the nature of image I. Image I is virtual. Enlarged. And upright. Part C images formed by lenses sometimes have colored edges. Suggest a reason for this. Different colors, which is which are found in your object, are being refracted, are being refracted by different angles, and this this will result in Question number 8a, figure 8.1 shows a negatively charged conducting sphere. On 8.1, draw the electrical field pattern around the sphere. So the electrical field pattern basically shows the direction of forces acting on any positive charges around the sphere. And that would be towards this sphere because um, positive and negative are opposite charges which attract. B. The current in an electrical device is 0.21 amperes. Calculate the charge that flows during a 75 period of time. Alright, so charge is equal to current into time, which is equal to 0.21 into 75 seconds, and that is equal to 16 coulombs. Question number 9. Figure 9.1 shows a circuit containing an LED and two resistors in parallel. Each of resistance R. The normal rotating uh, operating voltage of 
the LED is 2.1 volts and the normal current is 0.19 ampere. A1, the potential difference across the LED is measured with a voltmeter on figure 9.1. Draw the symbol for this voltmeter connected to the circuit. Alright, so the voltmeter is supposed to be connected in par parallel. So here I have my voltmeter. Two, the current in the LED is measured with an ammeter. On figure 9.1, draw the symbol for this ammeter connected to the circuit. And here is my ammeter. B. Calculate the value of R when LED is operating normally. Alright, so R is equal to voltage divided by current. The voltage, uh, when LED is operating normally, its voltage is 2.1. So, uh, since these are C, the LED is in series, the voltage for the 2R over here would be 3.7 minus 2.1 and that is equal to 1.6 volts. Now both of them, uh, both of the R would have the same value of voltage since they are in parallel. So we have the value of voltage as 1.6 volts. Proceeding towards the current, current over here is going to be the same because um, current in series is equal for all of the components but once it reaches over here this point it is going to be divided between these two because in parallel the current is divided and I'm going to be dividing it by two because uh, they have the same value of resistance and voltage so current is going to be 0 0.19 divided by 2 which is equal to 0 0.095 Voltage is 1.6 and current is 0 0.095, which means resistance is equal to 1.6 over 0 0.095, which is equal to 17 ohm. Question number 10 A magnet and a coil are attached separately to a door, and a door frame is as shown in figure 10.1. The purpose of the magnet arrangement is to activate a circuit connected to an LED indicating when the door is opening or closing. This will provide a visual indication that the door is being closed. Initially the door is, is closed and then it is opened. 1. Explain why the indicator comes on and then goes off when the door is opened. So the answer is movement of magnetic field. causes EMF induction and absence So only once the magnetic field is under the coil is the time when EMF is induced and this induced EMF causes the um, LED to light up. Once the door moves away, the magnetic field is away from the coil, no EMF is induced and so no, uh, the LED doesn't light up. Do the door shuts, the indicator comes on more brightly but for a shorter time than it did in one. So just and explain why this happens. So maybe the door, door over here is being shut with greater force and that would mean a higher EMF induced but for shorter time since the force is larger it would take less time to move and get closed and that is the answer.
B. A circuit breaker is recommended for use with an electric lawnmower. State two reasons for this recommendation. Alright. So it can be reset once it has been used. The switch is uh, quite easier than using a fuse. Reason two is that it gives quick responses. Eleven question number eleven part A. The circles shown in Figure eleven point one represent three gold nuclei. Three alpha particles are approaching the gold nuclei. On Figure eleven point one, complete the path of each alpha particle. Okay, so alpha particles they are positively charged particles, and so are the and so are the three gold nuclei. Uh, the first alpha particle is coming directly towards the center of the nuclei, and the alpha particle will be deflected. To the left somewhere here this way all right now coming to the alpha particle this particle is not aiming to hit the center of the nucleus it is rather at some distance from the center of the nucleus so it will not be deflected completely rather it will be deflected at an angle and then it will continue to go in a straight line with third alpha particle, it will be the same case. It will be deflected a bit and then it will continue to move in a straight line. All right. A detector of radioactivity in a laboratory indicates an average of 16 counts per minute when no radioactive samples are present. So the 16 count per minute over here is the background radiation. A radioactive sample of half-life 1.5 days is placed close to the detector when uh, which indicates a count of 208 counts per second calculate the count rate when this is uh, that is indicated six days later all right i'll start by subtracting the background radiation from uh, this sum which is 208 minus 16 and that gives the answer is 192 counts per minute so this is the actual radiation of the sample now I need to figure out uh, how many life uh, half lives have passed in six days, and that can be calculated by dividing six with one point five, which gives the answer as four. So four half lives have passed in um, six days, and that means two to the power of four, which is equal to sixteen. Now we'll have to divide the count rate by sixteen. And that gives the answer as 12 counts. So this is the count left um, after 6 days. But we still need to add the background rate. Which is over here calculated 16. And that is equal to 28 counts per minute. So we have the answer as 28. See the waste from nuclear power stations includes the isotopes, technetium, 99, 10, 126, and selenium, 79. These isotopes are radioactive with half-lives of many thousands of years. State 3 economic or and environmental consequences of producing this waste. waste. Alright, so we'll have to store it with precaution. We only need to mention three points. And it is also expensive. Alright, we are done with this paper. Thank you for watching.